Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. St. Albans Raid, which took place October 19th, 1864. Like I said, uh, northernmost land action. And they had to go to Canada to do it. They had to go to Canada. It was a raid conducted out of the province of Canada by 21 Confederate soldiers who had recently failed in engagements with the Union Army and evaded subsequent capture in the United States. Wait, 1864 was Canada? No, it was still Britain. Right. It was still part of the Britain, North American territories or some shit. So like Nova Scotia and all that is the province of Canada? Yeah. The whole thing is Canada. There's, yeah, they don't have... Well, Canada only goes to like Michigan now. They don't have like The rest of it is different they didn't have separate provinces it was from 1841 to 1867 wow where's it at it's just pretty much the eastern part yeah i think that's pretty much all canada it was kingston all those um capitals upper canada lower canada and canada today it was a part of ontario and quebec oh yeah just right yeah yeah so they're in the uh province of canada in this incident, Kentucky and Bennett Young led the Confederate forces. Young had been captured after the Battle of Selineville in Ohio that ended Morgan's raid, which we had uh, in 1863. He managed to escape to Canada, which was not then a unified nation. After meeting with Confederate agents there, he returned to the Confederacy, where he proposed raids on the Union from the Canada-U.S. border to build the Confederate treasury and force the Union Army to divert troops from the South. Come on, guys. It's not going to happen. Wow. Yeah. Young, he was commissioned as a lieutenant, returned to Canada, where he recruited other escaped Confederates for a raid on St. Albans, Vermont, a quiet city just 15 miles from the Canada and United States border. First two raiders arrived in Phillipsburg, Canada East, on the morning of 11 October 1864, where they stayed at the Lafayette Hotel. More people reached the hotel throughout the day. The city served as an ideal starting point. Because it was about one mile of the Canada-United States border, as we said um, three times already. Oh, Young was planning for a series of raids beginning with St. Albans, which was chosen first because it was close to the border and well-connected through roads, railways, and waterways. Fantastic. It also had three banks in close proximity and was a prosperous market town. Young was the first of the raiders to arrive in St. Albans on October 12th. And upon arrival, he began to inspect the city, particularly the banks. Oh, they like those the little banks. 22 young raiders planned to rob three banks, First National, St. Albans, and Franklin County Banks, and then set fire to the town using Greek fire. I don't know what that is. It's like a... It was in like a, some sort of grenade type deal. They reached the town in pairs after Young, posing as a part of a hunting and fishing club. Young was forced to postpone the raid, initially set for October 18th, because the town would have been too busy. Instead, he was like, how about the next day, October 19th? It was Wednesday, as it would be the dullest day of the week. Uh, hump day, baby. Uh, well, the engagement began on Wednesday afternoon, like we said, as Young set off a gun. Most townspeople believed it was a joke or a prank, but one of the raiders soon announced, we are Confederate soldiers and you are my prisoners. Oh. They robbed St. Albans Bank, which was the first of the three. They took cash from several people who came in to pay deposits as well as cash in the bank, but left uncut bank notes and coins behind. Okay. Prisoners were forced to swear allegiance to the Confederate States of America before being locked in the bank. After about 12 minutes, the robbers had moved on. <laughs> These people are like, I, swear, I pledge to uh, Jefferson C. Davis. They're like, no, I don't. I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> I wonder why they, just for like humiliation probably. Probably. They can do it. Nine raiders delegated to take the town as the robbers were ongoing, moving inhabitants onto the village green. Soon, resistance emerged in the form of Captain George Conger, a member of the 1st Vermont Infantry Regiment. He was on leave. He began to alerting the rest of the town and raised a group to fight back. In the face of resistance, Young and his group retreated, of course, as that's what the Confederates do, attempting to fire the town as they went. Elinus, e, Elinus J. Morrison was shot, dying two days later from his wounds, while Collins H. Huntington was wounded. They were both civilians. Mm. A raider, Charles Higby, was wounded by gunfire as armed citizenry uh, arrived on the scene but escaped with the rest of the Confederates. They reached Canada about 9 p.m. after crossing the Missisquoi River. While they planned to return to Montreal, the Canadian police captured or otherwise held 13 of the men in captivity. Oh, shit. Young soon resolved to give himself up. Damn. Took board in a house near Phillipsburg, 
The home's owner alerted Conger, who had pursued the Raiders into Canada. Conger's group took young prisoner. Oh, damn. That was a mistake. Right. Holy shit. Well, he de- he again attempted to escape, but recaptured quickly by the mob. Not that mob. Um, they began attacking him at this point, though. They were like, you know what? The fight was broken up by a British officer who saw that Conger's entourage returned to Vermont and that Young and seven other captured raiders were soon brought to St. Jean, Sir, or Richelieu, where they were treated as heroes. Oh. The raiders escaped to Canada again, despite a delayed pursuit. In response to the United States' demands, the Canadian authorities arrested the raiders, recovering $88,000 equivalent to $1.7 in 2023. Wow. However, the Canadian court ruled that because they were soldiers under military orders, officially neutral Canada could not even well, extradite yeah, them. Can't, we can't do nothing about it. Like, man, you guys are at war, bud. Canada freed the raiders, but returned to St. Albans the, the, at the money they had found. I guess. The release of the Raiders angered American opinion. As U.S. Secretary of State William Seward informed his counterparts in London, he says, it is impossible to consider those proceedings as either legal, just, or friendly towards the United States. And what can you do? In Europe, news of the raid and subsequent speculation of war between Britain and the U.S. increased the price of Confederate gold bonds. Oh. As an unintended con- consequence, the raid served to turn many Canadians against the Confederacy since they felt that Canada was being drawn into the conflict without its consent. Oh. The Confederate agents in Canada realized that and so no the further were and so no further raids were made. Like, like we don't have support here no more. Right. Like damn. None of the three banks still stand as of twenty twenty. Other sites surviving, uh, though, are Taylor Park and the American House, where some of the raiders stayed at. Fantastic. Good for them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on new episodes of Outlaws and Gunslingers or Battles of the American Civil War right here on the Bang Dang Network. And don't forget to check out those playlists.